Welcome to The Vanishing of Ethan Carter. This is a sort of mystery exploration game where you play as Paul Prospero, a detective with some rather special powers. It's made by The Astronauts, which is a new studio that was created when the original founders of People Can Fly, who had been making games in the AAA world for quite a while, wanted to make something more personal. So they split off from People Can Fly and founded The Astronauts. And The Vanishing of Ethan Carter is the studio's first game. Now, aside from looking like a very interesting game in general, there's actually two particularly interesting things going on that I want to mention before I get going. The first is that it makes extensive use of photogrammetry, which is basically where you take a bunch of pictures of something in real life from a bunch of different angles, and you feed it into some software. And from those pictures, the software creates a 3D model and the textures to go along with it which leads to some incredibly good-looking and incredibly lifelike graphics. As you can probably tell from this menu screen right now, but you'll see it even more when we get in-game. It looks amazing. And it's a very interesting kind of technology that I hope we'll see more of in the future. The other interesting thing going on with it is that this is one of only two games to use the four layers approach to narrative design, which is something that you probably haven't heard of, I don't want to get too far into it, because that would just take too long, but... Basically, it's an interesting new approach to how to design games that have stories, basically. And how to make the, the gameplay and the story blend well together. And feel like a cohesive whole. It's something very new. And, as far as I know, the only other game to actually be using this approach is Soma. Which is being developed by Frictional Games and isn't set to come out until... I think it's next year, isn't it? So this is actually the very first game using this approach to ever be released. So I'm really intrigued to see how it turns out. So I'm going to have links to the Four Layers approach as well as a link to a blog post on the Astronauts website about photogrammetry. So if you want to read more about those two things, then look down below. Also, The Vanishing of Ethan Carter is available on Steam and GOG. I'll have links to those in the description as well. Let's begin. Yeah, I've already played for about uh, 15 minutes, just to make sure everything worked and all of that, so let's go ahead and start a new game. Ethan Carter I didn't know, but he knew who I was. When the police won't help you, and the priests don't believe you, you call on Paul Prospero. You call on me. If you're a kid like Ethan, you're right. Plenty do. Ethan's letter started out just like any other fan mail. But soon there were mentions of things no little boy should know about. There are places that exist that very few people can see. Ethan could have drawn a map. I hadn't entered Red Creek Valley yet, but already I could feel its darkness reaching out for me. Finding Ethan Carter wasn't going to be as easy as knocking on his door. I was too late for that. To find Ethan, I had to figure out what this place was trying to hide from me. And here we go. Yep, I was not joking when I said this game was ridiculously good looking. This is the sort of game I could just spend a half hour looking at the wind blowing through the trees and the sunrise just gorgeous so the character I'm playing as Paul Prospero does have some abilities some some abilities to sense certain things which certainly helps him in his detectivery that's not even a word, but I just made it one. And it sounds like Ethan, who was sending messages to Paul, also had some of these same abilities. So let's continue on, explore, and figure out what is going on with this place. Also, one thing I want to mention is that I, I realize that YouTube is going to absolutely ruin these videos with compression. 
That's one of the most annoying things about YouTube to me, is how they overcompress everything. So even though this game looks ridiculously beautiful to me, I know it's not gonna look quite as good to you. Like, I know when I do this, it's gonna look like a pixelated mess. It's gonna look absolutely hideous. So I'm gonna try to keep my view very still, or slow moving at certain parts to hopefully increase how good it looks, because I know if you just slow down and just don't move the view, things tend to look a lot better, like this. This probably looks way better, compression-wise, than this. So, I'll try to do this as much as possible, because I really want you to see the beauty of this game. And another thing that's lost when you're in motion is just how much high detail has been put into the, the world. Like, if you just look down and just zoom in, the amount of detail is ridiculous. It is really insane. It's so good looking. But if you just go by it, you know, it probably just looks like a blur on YouTube, but there's so much detail. So, in other words, this first episode is probably going to be half hour, a half hour of me staring at trees and, and rocks. Because, oh my god, look at these rocks, they're so beautiful! Uh huh. Uh huh. If I could marry these rocks, I would. Alright, let's continue on. I've played for a little bit, like I think I mentioned before. And I did notice one interesting thing in this starting area. And that's the traps. So if we look around here... Yeah. There's some really, really nasty traps here. Now, as far as I know, these don't pose a danger to me, because I don't... As far as I know, you don't have any sort of a health system. I don't think there's a combat system. I don't think you can die, as far as I know. So I don't think they pose a threat to me. But... There is this sense ability, which is one of my powers. Now you can see it looks like I'm trying to open a, a rift to somewhere, but it's not quite fully opening. And that's because I need to find more of those. So there's more than just one trap. And if I get all of them, then I can do something. So let's look around. Let's find the rest of them. Oh my god, even these flowers are gorgeous. Actually, those are kind of blurry. But whatever. They, they look good from, like, three feet away. Ah, here's another trap. Yep, so it looks like I've got two pieces. I think I need two or three more. Oh, by the way, you can notice there's a little bit of blood down there on that stick. So I guess something hurt itself in that trap. Something or someone. Now, it might seem a bit strange that all these traps are around here, right? Like, why the hell are these traps here? What are they about? I've got an idea about that. Which I'll talk about soon. Ooh, I think there's one more piece, which I believe is over here. Oh no, we're missing one, aren't we? Yep, one more. There's one more. Where are you? Hmm, I think I've gone too far. Yeah, I don't think it's all the way over here. I missed one.
Where is it? I got that one. Even that tree stump is gorgeous. Hmm. Beautiful. Funny thing is, I just found the other trap before when I was playing just... Just a little while ago. And now I can't remember where the hell it was. Where the hell? It's not over there. I think it's on the left, because I only have one trap that I've found on the left. There's got to be more than just the one. Oh, shit, that scared me. Okay, found it. There we go, that should be enough. And here we are, in a field of skeletons. This note up here will illuminate what is up with this. So this is one of the things that Ethan Carter has written. Not sure if this is what's been sent to me or just something he's written in his own journal. Sap. An old man came to the forest every day to drink sap from the trees. To get there, the old man had to step around many dangerous traps. The villagers believed this old man had hidden a jade amulet in the forest. But the old man wanted the villagers to believe this, because then they would search the forest for treasure and not drink his sap. One cool fall night, someone set fire to the forest, and the fire spread to the village. The old man escaped the fire by covering himself in sap. When he returned to the village, he found all the villagers' bones. The old man sat down and cried. Then, he found more sap to drink. It's very creepy. Ethan, I told you, you can't be here. But Gramp, I wrote something for you. That's real nice. Thank you. Just, just leave it. I'll read it later. All right, now we've returned back to the real world. So by opening that rift, it looks like I went into the dream world. Or not not the dream world, the... The, uh... The world that Ethan had created through his writing. I went into this, into the story. Which is interesting. And it leads me to wonder whether the traps were actually real, because the story didn't just mention the skeletons that I saw but it also mentioned the forest full of traps. I'd be really surprised if those traps were real, because they seem kind of insane. I mean, who the hell would do that? Maybe. Maybe they were real, but... Maybe they were just a connection to Ethan, Ethan's story. Ethan's world, so to speak. I don't know. Like, I guess I'll go back there and see if the traps are even still there. Maybe they're gone. So I'm gonna obviously spend time here. Bunch of bottles. Which I'm assuming were full of alcohol of some sort. <laughs> Back of cigarettes, too. Oh crap, there's a bunch of cigarettes on the ground, too. Wow. Someone spent a lot of time here. It's a newspaper clipping. One Dead in House Fire by Jeff Jermu Bayfield County Fire damaged a historic home in Red Creek Valley Wednesday morning, according to officials from the Bayfield County Fire Department. A family of six was asleep when the blaze broke out at the remote house, once owned by Albert Vandergriff, at 46 Old 
Ogden Road in Red Creek Valley. Gail Carter, 58, was pronounced dead at the scene. Remaining family members were able to escape. Carter's husband, Edwin, 62, told investigators he may have fallen asleep with a lit cigarette in his hand. Firefighters were dispatched to the scene at 1.22 a.m. and remained at the scene until around 5 a.m. Wednesday. They returned to the property four hours later to extinguish hotspots, which had rekindled. Assisting at the initial fire was the Ashland Township Volunteer Fire Department. Masonville Emergency Medical Services was on standby at the scene. This is the other side of the paper. After a heated public hearing, no answer for Vander Griff Ayers by Tom Auden. Bayfield County. Members of the Vandergriff family ag again gathered in the Bayfield County Courthouse today to debate the fate of the Vandergriff fortune, which has remained in escrow since 1961, when family patriarch Albert Vandergriff, 71, died in a mine accident, the after-effects of which nearly destroyed the Vandergriff industrial and severely damaged the local economy. James Vandergriff, 38, of Chicago, argued that his father's demands were unreasonable and that many Vandergriff family members have personal reasons for wanting to avoid living in Red Creek Valley on the Vandergriff estate, as stipulated in the elder Vandergriff, Vandergriff's will. The recent fire in which the Vandergriff home was damaged, he said, only underlined the family's concerns. Since 1967, the Carter family has lived upon the former Vandergriff estate as temporary caretakers. Oh, okay. The Carter family. All right. So the Ed mentioned here, let's see, where does it say Ed? Um, talking about the husband. Oh yeah, Carter's husband, Edwin, 62. So Edwin is Ed, who was the one that was talking when we heard the voice of uh, Ethan and Ed. And I think Ed was Ethan's grandfather, right? I believe so. God, look at how beautiful this is. Just gorgeous. Look at how colorful the trees are. Green and yellow and orange. Alright, let's go see if the traps are still here. Because I want to know if they were actually real. No, they're not here anymore. Yeah, they weren't actually real, were they? Nope. Yeah, so I guess if anything seems out of place, then it's probably not actually real. Which explains why it seems so out of place. Also, there's so much detail. Just look at this. You can see all these leaves falling from the trees. And look at these butterflies. Okay, that's a creepy noise. Eww. I think that's the noise that came from the traps, but now that the traps aren't there, I think the noise is still there. Anyway, let's move on. Fork in the road. Let's see what's over here. If a game ever gives me the choice between going the way they expect me to go and going the other way, I will always go the other way. Well, almost always. Ah, oh, Jesus, look at this. This is like wallpaper of a game. The entire game is a wallpaper. Like, you want a wallpaper? There, take a screenshot. Wallpaper. Wallpaper. Frame this tree so it's at the right level, uh, right about there, and wallpaper.
I am playing with a controller too, by the way, which I don't normally do, but allows me to get some really nice smooth movements. <laughs> Bridge closed. No kidding, this thing looks like it's about to fall apart. The sound design too is really Red good. Red Creek Valley seemed like a quiet, ordinary place. I've learned two things in my life. No place is truly quiet, and nowhere is really ordinary. Ethan warned me about that. Warned me not to be fooled by what I saw here. He didn't need to worry. I'd worked dozens of cases, hundreds. This would be my last one. Yeah, the sound design is also really good. The blow of the wind, the creak of these boards, and the creak of this entire bridge. And again, the graphical details. All this crap blowing on the bridge. You can see this place is so exposed, everything's blowing really... You know, relatively violently compared to how it was back there. My god. Even this handrail! Even the handrail looks incredibly beautiful! Oh. This game is a graphic lover's paradise. Mmm. Those textures. And it's amazing how well this game runs, too. Like, I'm running with V-Sync on, actually, which I normally don't do. But it's not a kind of... It's not the sort of game that has a great demand for precision aiming or anything like that, so I don't mind, I don't mind the input lag that causes. But even with V-Sync on, and everything maxed, and I've got two times anti-aliasing going on, even with that, I'm still getting... It's never dipping below 60. So it seems very well optimized as well. Okay, got this rail car here and uh, disturbing amount of blood. Let's inspect it. So it's got this interesting system where you hear all these thoughts from your character. I guess that's him exercising his detective brain. You know, human, animal, scratches, where did those come from? Just thinking and thinking. And this is where one of my powers comes in. I have the ability to kind of see where something is. So if you notice, the words on the screen are... They're focused to different degrees, depending on where you look. So out here, they're all crazy and all over the place, and over here, they're more focused. So if you find just the place where they're perfectly focused... This happens. You can sort of open a rift and see where the thing actually is. Okay, it's by the water. Okay, and you can see the dam back there. And obviously, it's in that direction, since that's where I sensed it. So, it must be along the shore down there. Can enter this thing, although it does not run at the moment. But we can flip around the stuff. Whee! I'm assuming because I can mess with that stuff that at some point I'm going to be able to get this thing running. Looks like it was transporting lumber. Some rather haphazardly stored lumber. There seems to be some tire tracks in the mud. Hmm. This is the clue I needed. Oh, there's actually a footprint. Yeah, there's a footprint in the mud right there. Look at that. Looks like there's nothing this way. It's definitely the... whoops. It's definitely the sort of game that rewards exploration, no doubt about that.
Yeah, so it seems somebody was tied up here, but then got out. God, everything just looks so ridiculously good. Alright, here's a bit of a more disturbing scene up here. Yeah, somebody left two bits of their own personal bodily property behind their legs. Ugh, it's really disgusting. Yeah, where's the rest of the corpse? Dragged away or crawled away? Probably crawled. Jesus. Yeah, it doesn't take a genius to figure out where the body ended up. If you lose both your legs, you're gonna leave a big blood trail. Ugh. Fractured skull. Yeah, cause of death. Who the hell knows? Blood loss? <laughs> Fractured skull? Oh god. Somebody hit him really hard over the head. At that point, who the hell knows what the exact cause of death is and what the hell does it even matter? Losing both your legs, blood loss, hitting the head? Not yet. Scene was disturbed by a third party. Yeah, so, once again, I can't quite open a, a rift or whatever that is. Yet. I need to do something more. I think I need to kind of put the scene back the way it was or something like that. If I remember right. I remember they released a trailer showing off this whole scene. And I think that's what they were doing. But I can't do anything about that yet. Let's continue to look around. Look for more clues. Yeah, carelessly thrown here. Was this on purpose? It doesn't look like it was on purpose. It does seem carelessly thrown. I'm assuming this is what the rail car uses and probably hadn't been used in a while, so they fueled it up and then drove it over the person's legs, and that's how it ended up over there. Because this is dead grass. Yes, a rectangle shape. So the rail car used to be here for a very long time. Once again, let's focus this. Yep. used to be here, somebody fueled it up, I guess in a very uh, rushed way, obviously, since they dropped the canister. Apparently drove it across someone's legs, hence the blood on it, and then left it over there. I suppose the important question is why? There's also something I found over here. Do not enter. Well, no, not the sign. This. I thought this was a footprint at first. But it's actually somewhere there was a rock. Focus this. So there's a rock by a tree stump over there. A rock that used to be here. So this might have been the object that killed the person. Well, <laughs> might have been the object that hit the person in the head. Can't really say that's exactly what killed them, necessarily. I do wonder what's in there.
I can't remember if I went that way before, because I'm coming up on the point where I stopped playing. So I've almost entered unexplored territory. God, these rocks are beautiful! Yeah, I did not go this way before. I guess I can- whoa, what was that sound? I guess I can just take off into the forest, but... I wonder what I'm gonna find. Yeah, I keep hearing really weird noises. I don't know if it's just atmospheric music or what, because it sounds kind of like a dinosaur or something. And I'm pretty sure this game does not have dinosaurs. Oh god, where am I going? What have I gotten myself into? Okay, it's getting beautiful. It's lightening up. Jesus, this game is gorgeous! Wow. How this looks combined with that music is really beautiful. anything else in this forest. There's that weird noise again. What the hell? Might just be like a woodpecker, but... I don't know. It sounds creepy as hell. This isn't where I just came from, is it? No, can't go up there. Ooh, what's that? What the hell? Uh... What? What the hell is this thing? Alright, press one of these. Okay, they have to be pressed in the right order? What is this? Uh, what? Okay, this is definitely one of his stories. This is definitely one of Ethan's stories. Come back here, spaceman!
Holy crap, I forgot controllers can rumble because I so very rarely use a controller. I, that kind of scared me. That was kind of cool. <laughs> this is awesome! Oh! Space. I just realized I can move. This is amazing. gotta be the, the story. Fangs. The beast had fangs, but it was heavy and slow. So when it saw the light in the sky, it waited, thinking the light would go out, like the others before it. When it did not, the beast rose up on its legs and went to the place where the fire was still burning. As the orange light died, another took its place. This one was blue a bright and pure blue that the creature had only seen along the edges of the stars. The beast showed its fangs, and the light vanished. A moment later, the light appeared again between two distant trees. The beast wanted to go home, but could not ignore the light, so it chased it deeper into the forest. When the light stopped, it did so in a clearing of trees. The beast entered the circle. Feeling no fear, the trees turned toward the beast, pointing at it like needles. But the tops of the trees lowered and dug into the ground. The trunks and roots were raised into the air and closed around the beast like walls. As the ground disappeared, the beast realized it would never use its fangs again. Get out of my room, Travis! Stories, stories, always with the stories. Get out! I read the Fangs one. I liked uh, the Beast. At least he gets to leave this goddamn place. <laughs> it's a little fort. What is that? <laughs> Gaylord, obviously written by... What was his name, Travis? I'm assuming that's his brother. Abstruse Tales. America's finest science fiction. Yellow Hills of Mars by Douglas Spaulding. Yeah, Travis's defacement. Gay Lord. That is so cool. I really like that that setup, that uh, mechanic, if you want to call it that, of finding these things in the world that obviously don't belong, right? The traps, the hand activated thing, whatever the hell that was. Things that obviously don't belong in the actual real world, but they're actually just links. They're portals of a sort into the stories that Ethan wrote. How cool is that? 
not only does it tell you kind of more about the story and what's going on in Ethan's head, so not only does it just reveal kind of more story, but it's also a great excuse to have all these sorts of fantastical things happen. It's a good reason to have all these... Yeah, just all these really cool things happen, taking you to interesting places and this really dramatic imagery that obviously doesn't have any real place in the real world, like a, you know, field full of skeletons or going to space wouldn't really make any sense here, but it makes sense within the story that Ethan has wrote. So instead of just being text, yeah, I mean, they could have, you know, they could have just left these notes as text. They easily could have, and it frankly would have been pretty good just as that. But to actually kind of visualize the stories makes them even more powerful. And it drives home more of what Ethan was was thinking. It sounds like he wrote these stories as, as an escape of a sort. Because given what Travis said, it sounds like they didn't like living here. Or at least he didn't like living here, but... You know, given how abandoned and kind of dead this place seems, I'm going to assume that it just, in general, wasn't a very happy place. Although, ironically enough, that story actually about the beast wasn't really about escape so much as actually about entrapment or something. So even if writing might have been his escape, it sounds like maybe he wrote a about being trapped. Which is kind of ironic, I guess. But, it makes sense. You know, you write about what you know. Alright, so we went into the forest. Oh yeah, so that's where I was looking from up here down at this. So instead of going down here and up to here, I went all the way around the forest to here. Okay, but hold on, there's actually something I need to grab first. Down here. So this is actually where the thing, the, uh, the crank, is. It's right by the water line down here. Yep. Remember the, the image of it being along the water line in the dam in the background? Somewhere here. There it is. Yeah, this is also bloody. So this is bloody and the rock is bloody. So which weapon did... did what? I mean... I mean, the hit... Uh, the fractured skull... seems... kind of... sharp. If that makes any sense. And I think it was made by something that had a relatively fine edge. Like the crankshaft. Uh, the crank, for example. Whereas the rock seems too big and too blunt to call something that directed. But if that's true, then what was the rock used for? It's very bloody. Very, very bloody. It was used for something really horrible. And used very violently. Music is beautiful as well. It's gorgeous. Even these stacks of logs are beautiful. It's like each one is a unique snowflake. Thank you. 
This place is the very image of abandonment. This place has obviously not been maintained. Roof's breaking. Clock has stopped. Looks like the glass is actually broken. Yeah. I don't think anyone's been picked up at this stop in a very long time. Yeah, it sounds like when the local industry started to fail, everything just went to hell. That's an interesting little building. What is this? Some sort of utility thing. No trains have been through here for a long time. That was part of a pattern. Large pieces of this country were thrown away, doomed to become, and then remain, the worst versions of themselves. Beneath all that rot, dark things grow. I should go back to the scene of the crime now. You know, do I have enough to make something happen? There's also some areas in the forest that I should probably explore. One area in particular back there I think I missed. And this over here. Can I go up this rock? Kind of. There's no jump button, by the way. Which, at first I found very strange, but I think it actually makes sense. It, it becomes very easy when you give the player the ability to jump. It becomes very easy to just want to, like, bunny hop everywhere. I mean, I do it all the time. It's really hard to avoid wanting to do that. Which can become very silly. Yeah, certainly not getting through here. These stones really are just gorgeous. You know, there's something about the way everything looks that just looks more real than models that you hand create. Because these are actually created from real world objects, you know? They actually took pictures of an actual rock that actually looked like this. There's just a certain naturalness to it, you know? I think it might be more in the imperfections. I mean, yeah, a stone in any game, handmade, is gonna look, you know, it's gonna have a stone-like texture, and it's gonna look kind of like a stone, but... I think a lot of what makes something look real is all just the... the extra stuff, right? It's not just that you have a stone that looks kind of like... like that, but it's all the weird stuff, like... all the lichen growing on it, and bits of... pine needles and refuse, whatever that is. It's all the imperfections and the blotches. And all that extra detail that I think is really hard to make look... It's, it's really hard to make it look natural on your own. But when you capture it from a real actual source, then it can't help but look natural. Like this, just all this crap. Aside from the weird, stretchy geometry bit there, just all, all the crap on this road. It's so... Irregular, 
Which, I, I, actually, that's probably one of the things about it. It's irregular, right? It's not like a bunch of tiles. It doesn't look tiled. It looks irregular. To even little stuff like that, like, there's a piece of trash on the ground. I don't know what that is. Looks maybe like a popped balloon or something. Just all that stuff. Really makes this game just look different from most games. Because the visuals were made in a fundamentally different way than most. Than most visuals are made. Oh my god, it looks so good! Oh, I'm never gonna stop just, like, orgasming over the graphics. Ah, once again. The main way to go seems to be there, so of course, I want to go that way. And also, I do think I maybe have to go back to the scene of the crime, and there's a couple places in the forest I want to check before I continue on here. But I think I'm going to do that stuff in the next episode. So I'm incredibly impressed so far. I freaking love this game. It's ridiculously good looking. It does some really cool stuff as far as the uh, the story goes and especially the stuff with with Ethan's stories and delving into that and I'm looking forward to finding out more about Prospero's abilities as far as uncovering exactly what happened with this crime so it looks like he's gonna reconstruct the scene of the crime and then maybe see what actually happened so I'm looking forward to see what's up with that yeah, this is an incredibly impressive game. Alright, so I hope you have enjoyed so far, and I will be back soon.